Just about every YouTube growth expert says, make YouTube shorts, make TikToks, make Instagram reels. But how do you actually do that? At least in an efficient way. If you're focusing on making full length videos on YouTube, it can be really overwhelming to find the time to make shorts, TikToks, and reels. I have been getting a lot better at converting my existing videos into shorts and TikToks lately. Taking these full length YouTube videos I've already made and then cutting them down to size for a short form format. In fact, by views, most of my best performing videos are YouTube shorts. This also means a lot of my growth is driven by that content. So that means there's a huge opportunity for the content you've already made to find a new audience via repurposing it into short form. Remember to subscribe and we'll go step by step on how I efficiently make short form content using the videos I've already made in Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's get started. We're gonna make a short out of a video that I recently released called five mic mistakes that streamers commonly make and how to fix them. The first thing you'll wanna do is just make a folder in your Premiere Pro project, just so then you can have all your TikTok short form stuff in one place. Let's just call this shorts and go. So then inside the shorts folder, the next step is to make a new sequence in portrait orientation. So go down, click new item, sequence, and then in settings, go to 1080 by 1920 to get a nine by 16 portrait orientation video sequence. And make sure the frame rate matches your original project's frame rate. Click okay. And then now you have your sequence. Next, go through your original video project, find the key moments or highlights, and then copy them into your sequence. In some cases, you can just do a short standalone, like 10, 20 second clip, but I'm gonna look for clips that can summarize all the tips in the video into under one minute. First off, I'm gonna include the intro because I think I have a pretty good hook for this video of showing how bad a lot of streamers audio can be. So we'll just copy that, uh, paste it there. And then next, we'll go through each of the five tips as well as finding their solutions. Okay, so next we will take the clip about first step, poor mic technique, and then we'll add the clip that has the actual tip for the solution. So copy and paste. This doesn't need to be clean until you're actually doing your editing. So next, a really big thing that you should keep in mind when you're making short form content is that you must trim all of the fat. Things that could be useful in a full length video, oftentimes you should get rid of in a short form piece of media. Like in this video, I do a lot of quick demonstrations, explain why things work, stuff like that. But for a short or TikTok, you need to be straight to the point. So I'll say the problem and I'll give the solution. I don't need to explain why. If someone wants to see the explanation, they can watch the full video, which I'll leave a comment linking to it on that short. Smart. So one thing that actually really helps me with making my TikToks is that when I make a video, I will label the beginning of each individual section in a different color so that I can say like, oh, this is like mistake number three. This is mistake number four. And then that makes it easier for me to put my timestamps in the description for ch video chapters, as well as find benchmarks or markers for making my shorts. Okay, so now you'll see in this new sequence, everything is fairly separated. So let's just um, right click, ripple delete all the gaps. I mapped ripple delete to a key on my mouse, so I can just click, 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 and so on. Okay, so I have two minutes and 20 seconds of video here. I have to cut down a lot. There's a lot that I liked, but there's definitely a lot more that I could get rid of because I have to get rid of more than half of this to make it into a standalone short. Let's get trimming. First round of trimming done. We got it down to a minute and 13 seconds. So we trimmed just a little bit more to get to a minute and 12-ish seconds, but that's fine. We can still get under a minute and not trim anything by simply speeding everything up by 25%. However, we will do that at the very end. So next you can see that obviously things are not properly centered. To fit your 4K video into a 1080 by 1920p canvas, go down to 89% in that 4K video. If you had animations and stuff like that, you'll probably just want to remove them. So we can just go down to 89%. So boink, uh, 89. So that's better, but then let's make it centered. Oh my God, there's my leg. Um, <laughs> So move it over to the left to like 100. Perfect, we're centered now. And then let's see how that works on something else. 
um, let's set this 89 and then 300, uh, 350. So just continue doing this for the rest of your sequence. But before you do everything manually, just check and see if most of your sequence is roughly in the same framing, because then you can just copy and paste attributes and get it all done at once. Like this one right here, if I just copy that, um, if I go to this one and this one and this one, this one too, and this one, not that one. So if you do the copy and paste attributes to adjust everything, then you only need to make like micro adjustments. So like in this case, I move this over to like 250. Uh, nice. That's good there. That's also good. That's good. This one, however, we'll need to go down to uh, 89 and 150. Um, zero. We just move it over to the left. Go through your sequence and make sure you are centered and in frame. So that'll require adjusting the position and scale. Scale should be 89% if you're going from 4K to portrait 1080p. If you're doing a 1080p video into a 1080p sequence, you'll be making it bigger. Okay, we've managed to adjust everything to fit properly into the frame. And now let's add some flair. I've created some presets for stuff like small zooms in, little uh, camera shake effects, stuff like that. So uh, let's throw some of that in. So let's do a slow zoom out here. Um, let's make this uh, 120 and then it'll zoom out. Then like for this graphic right here, even though we already had the jitter effect, let's do a little um, whip effect outward with a little rake swish sound just to, you know, add a little bit more, uh, tick tock, uh, keeping those viewers engaged stuff. So we got that right here. Then for all these text titles, let's make them bigger. So let's like make it two lines, uh, make that all the same. And then let's increase the font to like 450. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So we can cut, we can apply this same type of look for all the other ones. Let's also throw the camera shake effect onto the titles as well. Poor mic technique. So that makes it a little bit more dynamic and visually stimulating because with TikToks, unfortunately to keep people engaged, you need to keep people visually and auditorily stimulated. So when I say add flair, that means like add motion, change the scene that you have. So like I'm going from here to here, to here, to here, to here, to here, to here. it changes like seven times in the first 12 seconds. And that's honestly not even enough for like ideal TikTok retention, but it's better than the YouTube videos pace. Then for this segment where I'm doing like a little list of stuff, we could do a little pop effect at each change to make it a little bit more like standing out. So there's pop one, uh, pop two. I have a pop sound effect that I'm just pasting right here and then pop. Uh, three. You just make sure sure they're all lined up. Space. Curtains, carpets, clutter, and cushions. The four okay, that's a little bit no more fun. Bad and oh heck, let's just put the the camera shake on everything else. So it works because I'm making everything smaller. So it's just sort of like a adds chaos to the part where I'm showing how bad things sound. And the last thing we can do is just add a little bit more B-roll or stock footage to break it up. I use pexels.com for my stock footage. I've also shot some of my own B-roll. So like this clip of the Shure SM7B, I can put this in somewhere and that'll look nice. Put this in like right here, um, break it up even more. And then 89, then move it over so the mic is in frame. Okay, I, I don't like that. What if we just like put this on top? So like maybe just do like 25%. Um, put that at the bottom. It's like the subway surfers that are playing while you're watching a, a your YouTube short or TikTok. Yeah, I'm doing a subway surfers bit right there. I have some more XLR interface stock footage, so I'll put that in in the low quality XLR interface clip. So maybe like make some low quality XLR interfaces. Low quality XLR. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. There's an action of the guy reaching for it. Hooray! 
All right, we I think this is sufficiently engagementified. We've added a lot more visual stimulus. It switches scenes more often. In the parts where it doesn't switch scenes, there's some like visual flair, like zooming out and jittering, stuff like that. Cool. So we have two steps left. So first we're going to add transcription and captions. So go to the text tab, um, go to transcript, transcribe sequence, select the audio track that has your speaking on it and nothing else, and then uh, transcribe. So this will do speech to text. There will almost certainly be some errors. Just manually correct those and then use that to make captions. So like, for example, I thought I said, it's because the audio is so bad. I said, is it because the audio is so bad? Question. Or like poor mic technique. I'm not talking about Michael. I'm talking about microphones. Okay, cool. That's all corrected. A lot of people don't correct the transcriptions and most people don't notice or care. But I just think it's a nice little bit of extra quality when your captions are actually correct especially if you do editing that covers your mouth so that people who rely on lip reading can actually understand everything you're saying. It's an accessibility thing. We've corrected our transcript, so now let's make captions. So click on Create Captions, go to your captioning preferences. I always do single line. I reduce the minimum duration in seconds to two, and I set the maximum length to 30 characters. This makes it so that the captions are fairly short, so that when I make them bigger, they're not too big or long. So Create Captions, um, it'll take a second, and then... See, there's captions. Hooray. So then select all your captions. Let's make them pretty now. So the font that I like to use is a Montserrat bold. I set the font to 75. I increase the distance of the drop shadow to seven. I set the drop shadow to 90%. And then for the align and transform area, I move it up by negative 250 and then it's all centered. So now the captions look nice. Um, if we also don't want to worry about punctuation at all, we could make everything a capital letter by just doing all caps. Um, but that's a little obnoxious and I don't like it. So you could do more with your captions, like cut it up and then like highlight the word that you're saying, but I don't like doing that. So I'm not going to do that. Making the captions here literally took me five minutes. So I don't want to make it any more complicated than it needs to be when I get 90% of the benefit. Now that we're done doing all the visual edits, I removed the music. We keep the sound effects and stuff, but we just select everything, right click, make subsequence. And then you drag the subsequence in, you uh, select it, so first, go to speed and duration, set it to 125%. You could do maintain audio pitch, but I find that that generally degrades the quality of the audio. So we'll keep it as normal without checking that. Do that. And then we'll go to pitch shifter in audio effects. Do that. And then we will set the uh, custom setup to 0 0.8 to account for the 25% increase in speed. So 80% of 125 is 100. So we will have 100% of our intended audio pitch. So do that. And then please do better than this. Oh, you're leaving? It's because the audio is so bad? Let's fix it. Poor mic technique. Ideally, you want your mic about six inches away from your mouth. Improper gain staging. Gain staging. Okay, so it's just a little bit faster. Hooray. And then we just add music. So I'll put the Wind Waker battle theme for the first bit. Streamers, please do better than this. Oh, you're leaving? It's because the audio is so bad? Let's fix it. So cut that off there. Make the volume negative 12. And then we'll just put in like a relatively chill song for the rest. So well, I'll just throw in Wind Waker Forest Island. Screw it. <laughs> Minus 18. That shouldn't be too loud. And then the icing on the cake when it when it goes through to the end of the, the video. EQ that makes your voice muddy and unclear. It'll loop back on short form platforms to say streamers do, do better, better than this. this. Oh, you're Hooray! Because the audio is so bad. So that's a nice clean loop. Let's just select this one more time. Uh, make a subsequence again. This is more complicated than it needs to be. If you don't speed up your audio, you can literally skip this whole subsequence thing. But I'm speeding up my audio because sometimes you just need to to get all your information in. So we're at 58 seconds. I will just rename this. F um, streamers. Uh, 
five Mike. Let's give this an extreme title like five critical Mike mistakes creators make and how to fix them. How to improve your mic. Okay. Five major mic mistakes in all caps. Okay. The title doesn't really matter. The, the content's really the only thing that matters. So we also made a first frame thumbnail by just adding like the text streamers do better and then putting two mic emoji PNGs on there. So that can add just a little bit of visual flair if someone's scrolling through my TikTok account, but the thumbnail really doesn't matter that much because people will typically find your shorts by scrolling and stumbling into them. So to summarize, we took an 11 minute video and turned it into a 58 second short form piece of content. We did so by first making an additional sequence in the original Adobe Premiere Pro project at 1080 by 1920, finding the key moments in the original video to copy into that sequence, trimming that down to be a little over a minute, adjusting the scale and position so everything fit properly into frame, adding some flair like extra b-roll, extra stock footage, sound effects, more like simulated camera motion via effects, then we used Adobe speech to text transcription feature, corrected the transcription, and then used that to make stylized captions. We then made a first frame thumbnail, which really doesn't matter, but while you're there, you might as well. It takes like a minute. So we did that. But this is how I repurpose my long form videos into short form content while making it better fit for short form content. You could just use the YouTube app to make YouTube shorts, but I find there's a lot of restriction and I think it's a lot better to just go into your original project, have all your original files and do that there. You'll have a lot more freedom and options. And honestly, it can be a little bit faster too because you're not fighting with your phone's interface. This is how I do it and I hope it can help you develop a smooth workflow for turning your YouTube videos into short form content. Thank you to my $5 to your patron Joshua and you can support me for as little as $1 a month on patreon.com slash Andy Cormier. For more tips on efficient content workflows, watch my video on content optimization and content recycling. If you form your strategy about making content that goes from long form to short form, you can be a lot more efficient and cover a lot more platforms and ultimately grow faster. Otherwise, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Happy creating.